Hello, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that are on my physical TBR. Now, because I live half the time in the UK for school and then, well, more than half the time of my time in the UK and then a few months here for summer, I brought back and purchased <laughs> some books that I was hoping to read this summer. I have not made very much progress on my physical TBR and I'm making this video as a way to motivate myself to actually read these books and just to show you as well what sort of books I'm interested in reading in the next few months. I am hoping to get to these books soon. I can't actually bring them all back because I have quite a few. So in the next month or two, I'm gonna be reading hopefully a good number of these. So let's get started. I have three by the same author. So I'll talk about those first. And that author is Mona Awad. Sorry if it looks like I'm not even sitting on this chair. I actually am just a very like long, chair the first i have is bunny and i've actually read bunny before it's definitely one of my favorite books i've ever read maybe my favorite favorite book i finally got a physical copy of it while i was camping earlier this summer i'm excited to go back through it and kind of annotate and look at everything hopefully in a new and different way if you don't know what bunny is about this is the story of a girl who is at a university for graduate school she does creative writing and the other girls in her cohort are all part of this friend group and they call each other the bunnies they're like hi bunny how are you bunny oh my god bunny i love your hair oh my god thank you bunny wow bunny you look like sprinkles today oh my god my heart feels so glittery happy bunny and one day they invite our main character to this after school <laughs> writing club called the smut salon that they have and she finds out that they're doing some weird things there that are not just writing or barely writing at all really and that's all i want to say because i don't think that it should be spoiled but it is one of my favorite books ever and i can't wait to reread it i also bought both of mona wild's other books actually while i've been home for the summer because i decided i'm gonna do a video reading all of her books and i also might do my dissertation on her so we'll see but Next up, I have 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl. This book is 13 chapters about this girl named Lizzie. And what I've heard is that it's almost like 13 short stories about her because I've heard that their time jumps a lot, but I'll read the back. Lizzie doesn't like the way she looks. Though she dates guys online, she's afraid to send any pictures. No one wants a fat girl. So Lizzie starts to lose weight. With punishing drive, she counts almonds consumed and pounds dropped navigating double-edged validation from her mother, her friends, her husband, and her own reflection in the mirror. But no matter how much she loses, will she ever see herself as anything other than a fat girl? This is darkly funny um, and a deeply resonant no novel, which delivers a moving depiction of a young woman whose life is hijacked by her struggle to conform. As someone with an eating disorder or who's had an eating disorder in the past, I think this will be a really interesting read. Roxanne Gay says it's a beautiful necessary book and it's being compared to margaret atwood or mona awad is so i can't wait to read this one i think it's gonna be emotional for sure but i can't wait to see what it's like 13 ways of looking at a fat girl is also her first book so i might try to read them in publication order first is 13 ways of looking at a fat girl second is bunny and third is all's well by mona awad obviously this one the cover looks different so it's kind of messing with my feng shui but it's fine all's well i'm especially excited about because it is about shakespeare which i love and acting which i also love and chronic pain which i don't love but i have and mona wad has i believe struggled with chronic back pain and the character in this book also does so i'll read a little bit from the back because i don't know exactly what this is about miranda fitch's life is a waking nightmare the accident that ended her burgeoning acting career left her with excruciating chronic back pain a failed marriage and de a deepening dependence on painkillers determined to put on shakespeare's all's well that ends well she faces a mutinous cast hellbent on staging macbeth instead I love Macbeth. I need to read All's Well That Ends Well, actually, probably before I read this. That's when she meets three strange benefactors who have an eerie knowledge of Miranda's past and a tantalizing promise for her future. One where the show goes on, her rebellious students get, get what's coming to them, and the invisible, doubted pain that's kept her from the spotlight is made known. I just, does that not sound fantastic? I'm so excited about it. You know, I do like the cover. It just doesn't match the other ones. And it's a floppy book. Like, how nice is that? So very very excited moving on from mona awad we have the song of achilles by madeline miller now i know everyone read this book ages ago this is the story of achilles and patrolicus i believe that's how you say it 
and it's a retelling in which they are gay lovers. I need to read this. Apparently everyone says that you will cry and you know how it's gonna end but it doesn't really matter. So I think like I haven't gotten on that train yet of Greek myth retellings not since I read Percy Jackson like ages ago. So I'm really excited to restart that journey and I need to stop putting off reading this book. I think it's been so hyped that I've had a hard time wanting to read it basically. Next up we have this beautiful book Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi. This is the UK edition and look at this. Look at look at that. Right? Anyway, I'm super excited to read this because I'm wanting to read more pirate books because I love pirates. And this is about Amina Al Sarafi who is a pirate and a mommy and she's sort of coming out of retirement to go on one last little mission. She's getting the whole game back together. She needs to find a treasure, I would assume. Um, yeah, I don't want to know too much more about this, but I'm hopefully going to read this very soon. It's a bit chunky, but I'm excited. And it's by Shannon Chakraborty, whose work I've never read before, but I really want to get to. Next up, we have Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. I got this book at my favorite bookstore in the world, which is Mr. B's Emporium in Bath. And everyone was talking about this, like the people behind the counter. And I think Louise Kennedy was coming to speak there, but I was gonna be out of town, which sucked. But I was talking to booksellers about it. It seems amazing. I read the first few pages, still seems amazing. And I'll read you guys the synopsis because it's quite short. Also, it's Irish literature, which I haven't read enough of and I want to read more. So it says, there's nothing special about the day Kushla meets Michael, a married Protestant from Belfast in the pub owned by her family. But here in 1970s Ireland, love is never far from violence and this encounter will change both of their lives forever. From what I've read so far, the writing is captivating and just stunning. I can't wait to read this. Um, and I've been wanting to read some more literary fiction soon, so we will see. Next up, we have Carrie by Stephen King. And what is there to say about this book? Like, everyone knows Carrie. Everyone knows what it's about, except me. I don't really know what it's about. I know that she has powers. Carrie does. And she's bullied. And there's a tense relationship with her mom. And that's all I really feel like I want to know going in. Oh, and there's that scene with the blood. But I've never seen an adaptation of Carrie. I've never read one. I've never obviously read Carrie or seen the movie, so I'm really excited. I've never read from King before, and this is his first book, so I wanted to start here. It's also short, unlike it and other books that he's written, so I felt like this would be a great way to see if he is an author for me, and I've recently read some horror for the first time, and I'm really enjoying it. Next, we have A Perilous Undertaking by Deanna Rayborn. This is the second book in the Veronica Speedwell series, and I read the first book of this, which was A Curious Beginning in January and just loved it. Um, I'm actually currently rereading it, sort of skimming it still. It's been weeks um, so that I can get to this because I forgot a little bit what happened and I just wanted to experience it again. I gave it five stars. This series follows this girl named Veronica Speedwell, or a young woman, I should say, in Victorian era England. And she is a lepidopterist which means that she collects butterflies and studies them. And she goes on an adventure where she meets this guy named Stoker, who's a taxidermist and a natural historian. And they're very cute and they solve mysteries and it's cozy, but the stakes are high and there's hijinks and it's just so good. So I'm so excited to read the second one. Next up, we have Catch 22 by Joseph Heller. I have never really wanted to read this book um, although I like the cover, but I got it from my little free library in the neighborhood and it's very heavy, so it seems like it's gonna pack a punch. Uh, the first sentence or so is stunning and very intriguing. I'll read you the back in case you don't know what this is about, but I don't really know what it's about, to be honest. And it's definitely, it's historical fiction. I'm not great with history, so I'll be excited to read this. It's like no other novel. It has its own rationale, its own extraordinary character. It moves back and forth from hilarity to horror. It is outrageously funny and strangely affecting. It is totally original. I mean, that sounds amazing. So it's set in the closing months of World War II and an American bomber squadron off of Italy. It's the story of a bombardier named Yossarian who is frantic and furious because thousands of people he hasn't even met keep trying to kill him. Catch-22 is a microcosm of the 20th century world as it might look to someone dangerously sane. <laughs> It is a novel that lives and moves and grows with astonishing power and vitality, a masterpiece of our time. 
that didn't really tell us what it was about, but it did make me even more excited to read it. So that's Catch-22. Next up, we have The Dragon Republic, which is also chunky, by R.F. Kuang. Um, this is the second book in the Poppy War trilogy, and I'm really excited to read it. I think with the first book, I liked it. I didn't love it, but I can't really place why. I think it took a while to read. I was doing lots of other stuff because I was super busy with school. So hopefully I can get more into the world in this one. But the Poppy War is about this girl named Rin who goes to this prestigious academy. It's a war academy and then a war occurs halfway through the book and she has to fight in it and there are some fantasy elements. It is historically based. But I believe it's supposed to be set in China and it's about wars between China and Japan, but it's obviously a fictionalized version. So I'm excited. I didn't like Babel. I'm skeptical of reading Yellow Face, but Poppy War I did like enough to want to pick this up. So excited. Next we have Five Survived by Holly Jackson. I got this all the way back in January and I'm still really excited to read it. Holly Jackson wrote A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I love that series. I just like blew through it, read it super quickly and I finished it this year and it was just so good. So I'm excited to see what this one is like. So Red Kenny is on a road trip for spring break with her five friends, her best friend and her older brother, his perfect girlfriend, a friend from school and the guy Red wishes was more than a friend, but they won't make it to their destination. When their RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere with no cell service, they soon realize this is no accident. They have been trapped by someone out there in the dark, someone who clearly wants them dead. With eight hours until dawn, the six friends must escape or figure out which one of them is the target. But is there a liar among them? Buried secrets will be forced to light and tensions inside the RV will reach deadly levels. Not all of them will survive the night. Clearly one of them, at least one, dies. Simply one, I think, because five of them survive. So I'm really excited. I like how it's sort of a closed setting because characters can really start to lose it. And tensions can be high on any sort of road trip. So maybe the tensions are already high and then they break down or they're stopped. Excited. Okay, we're almost at the end. So next up we have Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I'm so excited to read this book. It sounds weird and crazy and gross and I, love it this is one of the books where the main character is very much the villain i'm just gonna read you guys the back irena obsess obsessively takes explicit photographs of the average looking men she persuades to model for her scouted from the streets of newcastle placed on sabbatical from her dead-end bar job she is offered an exhibition at a fashionable london gallery promising to revive her career in the art world and offering an escape from her bread of drugs alcohol and extreme cinema <laughs> Extreme cinema, what is that? The news triggers a self-destructive tailspin centered around Irina's relationship with her obsessive best friend and a shy young man from his, her local supermarket who has attracted her attention, dot, dot, dot. It's an incendiary debut novel and I'm really excited. It sounds like something Otoza Mojfe would write and I love her, so I can't wait. Last but definitely not least is The Final Empire, which is the first book in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. I have only read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and I really want to read Trust the Emerald Sea and obviously start Mistborn which is what most people say would be the entryway into his fantasy and I am excited to see what the fuss is about. I think the magic system has something to do with metal. You know, I'm just going to read the back. A lot of these books I like know vaguely what they're about, but not really. So the mist rules the night, the lord of ruler owns the world. What a name. For a thousand years, the ash fell. For a thousand years, the Ska slaved in misery and lived in fear. For a thousand years, the Lord Ruler reigned with absolute power and ultimate terror, divinely invincible. Every attempted revolt has fared, failed miserably. Yet somehow, hope survives. A new kind of uprising is being planned, one that depends on the cunning of a brilliant criminal mastermind and the courage of an unlikely heroine, a Ska street urchin, you must learn to master allomancy, the power of a mistborn. I think that's the metal magic. Because allo, allo, that's like alloys? I don't know. What if the prophesied hero had failed to defeat the Dark Lord? The answer will be found in the Mistborn trilogy, a saga of surprises that begins here. And Robin Hobb blurbed it on the back, and I also haven't read any Robin Hobb, but I would like to. And I'm kind of on my fantasy grind, so I'm excited about it. 
Can you tell I'm excited? I've said it like a million times. I'm excited about these books. Why don't I just read them? All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed it because now maybe I'll actually read these books now that I'm really like anticipating them. <laughs> Um, hopefully I will get to them in the next couple months. I hope that you guys either found some books that you would like to read or just got a better sense of what books I will be recommending in the future. If you got this far in the video, comment a book emoji because that's all I can think of. And tell me what books you're looking forward to reading or any books that you think that I should get. Feel free to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you'd like. And then click the bell icon to make sure that you're notified every time that I upload. Upload. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.